Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews. I'm Richard and today we're going to talk to you about the reason why I chose a 458 Spider. So why did I choose a 458 Spider? when there's quite a few other models around are comparable to this sort of amount of money, whether they be used or new. So other models I could have chosen, um, I had a 993S which I sold to buy the 458 Spider. so I could have got myself a Porsche GT3 RS, near as damn it the same price, maybe a little bit less than I paid for the 458 Spider second hand, I could get a brand new GT3 RS. Why didn't I go that way? Why didn't I go for a Performante? Secondhand Performante is about the same amount as what I paid for this. Or I could have gone for a secondhand um, Hurricane Evo, the four wheel drive, or a brand new Hurricane Evo rear wheel drive, the RWD versions. Okay, well, as you know, I, I talked to you before in the previous video about I always wanted a 355, but I decided against that because of the maintenance costs and, um, and that fact that it was deeply flawed. If you haven't seen that video, then please check back. At the end of this video, there should be a link to the previous video. So in the, in the previous video, the history behind the 458 Spider. So me actually, the decision for me actually um, going up and purchasing the 458 Spider, all the history behind it, um, all the protracted schedule of events that occurred, um, if you haven't seen that video, then please check that video. And in that video, I talk a lot about the decision about why I, I really wanted a 355 and why I chose against the 355. So, I mean, first of all, just look at the car. Just look at it. Look at that engine, 458. Yeah, you can't see it as well as you can in a 458 Italia. Well, that's because you get the capability of having a hardtop roof and the hardtop roof being stowed. And you can't have it all, as they say. So, Performante. Why didn't I go for Lamborghini Performante? I just didn't like the Performantes. Um, the Performante Hurricane just didn't really float my boat. I always wanted a Ferrari. If I was going to come out of the of the 993S, then it was going to be a Ferrari. It's just Ferrari. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, it could have been Lamborghini. It could have been another Porsche, etc. But I was coming out of a 993S. I wouldn't have sold the 993S for a, for a GT3 RS. It had to be a Ferrari. I needed to scratch the itch, and hence why I decided on Rosso Corsa as well. The classic resale red, as they say, um, because first Ferrari, it's got to be red, it's got to be Rosso Corsa, and obviously to to intrinsically hold value, um, to keep the value in the car as much as possible as well. Why didn't I choose an Aston Martin? Aston Martin prices, God, they plummet. You know, they don't hold value, and it's just not into Aston Martins. They're just not a hip style anymore. You know, I think I think they've lost their kudos. Um, you know, it's just obviously my opinion, but. Aston Martins just don't cut it, you know, it's nowhere near the cachet of a, of a Ferrari. So it had to be a Ferrari. Why didn't I choose any of the other Ferrari models? 430 say for example. Why didn't I buy a second hand 430? Again, uh, you know, not a dual clutch system, outdated style. If I was going to go the 430 route then I would have really have gone to a 355 even though the maintenance costs. It just uh, just well, didn't float my boat, you know. I pretty much I decided on a 458 Spider. It was going to be a 458 Spider or not. And of course, one of the key things with a 458 Spider is the is the value retention. The value remains in the car. I got a very good deal on this car. I'm not going to go into the actual monetary values of how much I paid for this, etc. What I will say is I never financed it. I don't believe in financing cars. That's just my opinion. Um, you know, I'm not into into financing cars, and not into financing anything apart from mortgage and such. Like, you know, yeah, I have a mortgage, um, but uh, I believe that if you if you're going to buy something nice, and then you you graft and, and you save up to buy it, um, you don't put it on load of finance. Um, but that's just my opinion, you know. There's other models around that I could have purchased as well. I could have got a Ferrari 612, say for example, half the price perceivably of what I paid for this. Um, why didn't I buy a 612? I actually do really like the, the Ferrari 612s. The problem with the 612s, first of all, they're not a mid-engine car. I wanted a mid-engine Ferrari, which, you know, in my mind, whether for good, or bad or ugly of it, it's a proper Ferrari. A mid-engine Ferrari is a proper supercar, a proper Ferrari supercar. The the 612 is really like a GT, and it's a 12-cylinder, so it's a V12, beautiful engine, fantastic sound. 
and I really love the styling on the 612. If I was going to go for a GT V12, then it would be a 612. Again, as a V12, though, you're you know quite an old car as well. You're looking into the maintenance cost of a 612. 612 maintenance cost would be a lot higher than the than the 458. Also, I was very fortunate with this 458. It's a late 2015 September. It's a late 2015 September build. So what that means is I've got two years left of the service pack on this. So as you know, when you buy these new, you have a seven-year service pack. Well, this being 2015, I've still got two years left of the service pack. So that's this year and next year. I wouldn't have had that if I bought a 612 or any other vehicle. So in effect, this isn't going to cost me anything to service. It's, it's only consumables that I would have to pay for. Um, and you know, the tyres and everything else, and here's damn it brand new. It's only done 5,100 miles. So, and, and you know, obviously the reason why they provide a seven year service pack on these is because they are a lot more reliable than they used to be. A Ferrari wouldn't provide a service pack on a car that they know they weren't going to make on, I'm sure. Um, and I've got, you know, buying it from the dealer, I've got the, the powertrain warranty on it as well. So, you know, that obviously adds a lot of value too. I believe that's a two year powertrain warranty. So I've got the powertrain warranty too. That makes a lot of difference. So there was a, there's a lot of pluses and yeah, a 458 Spider because they hold their values, you know, it was a lot of money. It was, you know, I had to get a good value for the 993S and then pump up that cost, pump up the amount of the 993S, add to it obviously to be able to procure the 458 Spider. And nobody knows what's going to happen in the future We're in a situation with COVID example, but you know, also you only live once. What am I going to do? Am I going to keep saying, no, I'll get it next year. I'll get it next year. You know, we only have one life, you know, go for it <laughs> as long as you can afford it. And it's not going to crucify you financially. And, and uh, you know, it, it, it's something sensible. Is it ever sensible to buy a Ferrari? Um, but uh, you know, sometimes in life you just got to go for it. You know, otherwise, you know, you, you, you you're on your deathbed and you think, well, if only. You know, and I don't want to be in a situation where I'm thinking, if only. You know, so other cars I could have bought. You know, I've count them off the top of my head: uh, Porsche GT3 RS, um, Hurricane Performante, Hurricane Evo four-wheel drive second-hand, um, Hurricane Evo rear-wheel drive brand new. Now that was an option, but not a Ferrari, as I said before, it had to be a Ferrari. Uh, 430, um, 612, F12, I mean an F12 is pretty much the same money I paid for this, a second hand F12, we could have a second hand F12 or the 458 Spider. Again, the F12, it's a V12 GT car, I really wanted it and it had to be a mid-engine supercar and that's what it is, you know, 458 Spider was the clear, clear option and they're very reliable general in general as long as you get a good one you're not going to get hammered on the maintenance side um, the consumables are fairly reasonable as far as ferrari goes at the end of the day you get ferrari pricing it is what it is you know what can you do um so that was pretty much uh, the decision made you know and then it was a case of um why this particular one i've already gone into before but fantastic spec i mean it's just about the perfect spec got all the carbon inside carbon dash carbon driving zone carbon center console You've got, even got the carbon kick plates on this car, which are very rarely featured. You've obviously got the carbon um, rear grill section. There's not really a grill on these. You don't have the Challenge Stradale grill anymore on, on these on these modern Ferraris. But you've got this carbon carbon fibre as well. The um, diffuser isn't carbon fibre, but I mean, you never see it anyway. So I think you've got to be a bit crazy to spec that sort of item because it's cost a fortune and you're never going to see it. Um, and I didn't, uh, you know, the car also hasn't got what they call sports pipes on it, which in effect is just black pipes. It's not a sports exhaust, it's just black pipes. These cars, you know, do they really need a sports exhaust? They sound fantastic without it, but I may go for an Inconel um, sports system or an IPE system in the future, maybe. They're the, they're the ones that sound fantastic. I've been watching some videos, so I've, well, I watch a lot of videos. I'm subscribed to Normal Guy Supercar, so shout out to Normal Guy Supercar. Great content. Hopefully you're catching my content as well. I know you've seen one or two of my videos, so thanks a lot for watching. Um, but I watch from Normal Guy Supercar. You know, got a lot of information from, from uh, his channel. Um, he did a fantastic video on comparisons of all the different types of exhaust systems that you can get on these 458s. Fantastic video. I mean, he's, he pretty much nailed, nailed it perfectly. All the different types of sports exhaust that you would put on a 458. And he had them all there and he compared them all very, very cleverly and we've you know put a lot of detail in there so if you ever want to compare and, and see 
Uh, you know, if you want a sports exhaust in your 458 and you want to see which options are out there and, and a comparison, then go and check Normal Guy Supercar's video out on that. It's fantastic, it's a really good video. So just to summarise, yeah, I could have had many different models of Lamborghini, I could have had many other different models of Ferrari, 612, etc. Um, for the same price that I paid for this 458 Spider, but I wanted a mid-engine supercar, proper mid-engine supercar Ferrari, and I wanted it in Rosso Corsa and pretty much this is the safe option for intrinsically holding the value and for the different items you get you know for very fortunate to get the last year manufacturer of the 458 Spider. thereby I had a two-year powertrain warranty and the last two years of the service pack so I couldn't have got a better deal if I tried it's just everything fell into place I was very fortunate um, and that's really why it was the 458 Spider. Um, let's hope you know in the years to come that will be a good decision, I'm sure it will be. So quick update now on the actual, on some other bits and pieces. Um, with regards to the garage door, the garage door is gonna be um, replaced in around April the 20th, around that period. The garage door has been ordered, it's all spec'd out. Um, if you haven't seen the, the door to my Ferrari video, then please check below in the, in the uh, supercar playlist, you'll see it there and that details all about the actual um, new garage door that's gonna go on here, the new section of garage door by Holman that's gonna be put on here. And what's actually happening, I'll give you a bit of, bit of additional insight. The, this opening from, um, from the wall to wall, this section is constrained by having a, an old style up and over garage door. The spring mechanism to actually balance the door going up and over, hence why it's called an up and over garage door, is actually taking a lot of clearance away from the actual um, entrance to the garage. That makes it very constrained. The, the 458 isn't a narrow car. And my 993 was a lot more narrow than the um, was a lot narrower than the than the 458. Now what we're also having doing, to, you know, once you're doing it, you might as well do it properly. So we're having a full eight width distance wall to wall put in. So in effect, that means circa four inches either side of the wall are going to be cut away as well, because the lintel that we've got running across the top of the garage door is wide enough to be able to support cutting away more of the garage opening. So why not? Why not put a, a wider garage door in if you can to make it just a lot easier? So that's what we're doing. And that's being done in about four weeks time. So in four weeks time, the garage door will be, will be um, changed and we're gonna document that as well. So there'll be a video on the actual work that's being performed. Um, you can just about see inside the garage. This is the old entrance to the garage door. The garage was actually extended out further um, some years back before my time. And this is the old entrance that actually they left there. So I'm gonna have that section removed as well because it causes constraints inside the garage with regards having the 458 problems where we've got to move the, move the car inside the garage to make sure we don't foul the doors. So the inside section of the garage is gonna be actually knocked down. So the old entrance to the garage is gonna be is going to be removed and a new lintel is going to be placed um, on top to obviously provide the support that's required that those pillows that those that removing those pillars um, will remove that structural strength so you've got to put that structural strength back in obviously so a new um, thinner lintel will be put across the top and that will be supporting the load then we can have a lot more a lot wider access inside then the garage door will be replaced as i said the front opening is going to be cut back four inches either side we're going to have a full eight width wall-to-wall -wall distance there clearance for moving the garage for moving the car in and out it will be an automated insulated Hormon sectional door that will be put in all of them remote control and we've also added in a cool little feature which um, a lot of fitters don't actually uh, seem to understand about but I researched it and found that out from Hormon and I spoke to Hormon directly to get the actual details of how it should be fitted and that is the ability to securely have the top panel of the sectional door open on the remote control so as you can vent the garage. Now we use the garage for um, weight training as well as obviously storing the car because we've got a section at the back of the garage that we use for, for training. So in the summer, um, it's the, it'll be a lot better to be able to, or it'll be great if we can vent the garage securely and even leave the garage, garage uh, vented, leave the top of the garage open overnight to, to allow the garage to vent if we needed to, you know, to allow air to circulate for the car. You know, obviously that helps to reduce the RH levels, the humidity levels. Now, it's a feature that you can have on the, on the sectional Hormon doors, um, but you have to change the bracket system around to make it securely. So obviously it's still locked. Um, in other words, thieves can't break in still very very secure no no breaches on security at all but it means that you can flip the front panel in a very secure manner that is still locked and secure 
and that allows the garage to vent. So I've gone for that option as well. Why not? You know, it was, it was minimal to do at the time, whereas about five times more to do after the fact. So that's, that work is being done in the future. Um, that's in circa four weeks time. The garage will always be done. As I say, we're gonna produce um, some content on, on those changes that are gonna be made to walk you through and take you through the story of the garage door being changed. Then we're gonna be creating a lot of content on the 458. There's gonna be, we're gonna be creating similar content as we did on the 993S, but a lot more detailed. Um, so we're gonna be going through various different changes um, first of all, obviously, we will take you along on the first drive of the 458. Also, the car is going to be detailed and it's going to be fully wrapped. Now, at the moment, it's got a PPF clear coating on the front of the car, but it's an old clear coating that was done um, pretty much when the car was made, or just after the car was made, obviously. Um, so that PPF coating is going to be removed and the whole car is going to be detailed and a full clear PPF um, film paint protection film, if anybody doesn't know what PPF stands for, it's paint protection film. So that is going to be installed to the whole car, so the whole colour, the whole car is going to be protected, um, which will then ease my concern whenever I park it anywhere, although pretty much it won't be parked anywhere without me being able to keep an eye on it. But wherever we park it, whenever we take it to car shows, etc., it will protect it against people getting a bit over enthusiastic, getting close to the car with things like these zippers and such like, and it won't damage the paintwork and it will be self-healing PPF. So you know, if you heat the PPF, if it's got some marks in it, if you heat it, the marks will come out. So, you're gonna be documenting in video um, all those enhancements to the 458. And if I fit uh, an Inconel exhaust on it in the future, we'll document that as well, of course. So we'll be taking on to all those, all those journeys or, on all the updates to the car that we'll be performing. And also we'll be taking you to the car shows as they come forward, obviously we're still in this situation, in this COVID climate. Um, but as the car shows come forward, we're already booked for a few and we'll be taking you on the, on the journey to those car shows as well in the 458 and showing you all the other cars around and hopefully getting some reviews um, of friends' cars and of um, hopefully you know be able to sort some deals out with some dealers as well to be able to get some loan cars to be able to, uh, to, be able to document and show to my viewers. We're looking to grow the channel um, as much as we can this year. Uh, we want to get it past the 1,000 subscribers. It's a very Im important watermark for us to get past 1,000 subscribers. If you're not subscribed or bed already and you like the content, please think about subscribing. If you like if you like the content, then please click the like button. It's very important for us. It really helps us. It doesn't, doesn't take much effort from you guys. You just gotta click that like button and it's very, help, very helpful for us. And subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Uh, a high, a high percentage of the viewers of my content aren't subscribed. I think it's about 90% aren't actually subscribed. So guys, please think about subscribing. It's very important and it will get us up to that thousand mark by the end of the year. And then we can really start moving the channel forward. Great new content to come on the 458 Spider. Just look at that, you know, who would not want to see content on this, on this car, eh? What a, what a phenomenal car. Great content to come and you know, we're going to say take you through the actual differences, uh, the changes that are going to occur in the garage and all the changes that are going to occur on the car in the future and the car shows. So that's pretty much it for this video. Take care, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you're not subscribed, think about subscribing already. And we'll see you in the next video.